So, got to the range with Dylan. You tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. First time shooting uh, a P I think I've shot a P365, but this thing is, is tiny. How does it shoot? It my, good. My little baby. Yeah, it feels good. It's <laughs> tiny. Yeah. <laughs> How many rounds does this hold? Uh, twelve. No way. That holds twelve. Yeah, that's the reason I got it. It's compact, but also holds enough rounds. Yeah, that's impressive. You're gonna embar embarrass me. I can embarrass you. All right, <laughs> Roman's out here. We're gonna shoot a couple of steel targets, maybe at about sixty feet out there. All right, gas it up. Let's see it. Dude. Okay, you're shooting really low. Oh, that was... Wait, wait. Wait, wait, hang on. Did you, were you aiming at the target for that shot? Yeah. Okay, just so you know, you're about 10 feet to the left. No joke. 10 feet and into the ground. <laughs> What in the world? That's how good of Here. a shot I am. Here, <laughs> put the gun down, take the camera. Okay. I'm gonna shoot your little, your mini mag, okay? okay? So, this guy. Let's see, your gun sights may not be working. Oh, I pulled that last one. <laughs> Way to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what's good is, um, it's good to learn that. It's good to learn that the first time. I actually like when people realize that. Okay, this is. Uh, that's why I like having targets out at like this range. Uh -huh. Is to really show that like, because um, if you have something at 15, 10 feet, yeah, you know, a, like a paper target, and you're like, oh, I'm hitting the target. When you push further out, that amount that you're off yeah. by the center of the target, like if you're hitting like, oh, I'm like in this window right here. Yeah. That window gets massive yeah. as you go out, right? So you literally had a shot that hit the the snow in the berm on the on the left. That's oh why I was like, gosh. wait, did, did you? And so, and especially on smaller guns, any little movement translates into a you know Huge. exponentially yeah. more as you go out. And so that's why, like the uh, the the challenging part yeah. about shooting a gun effectively is ba is is really really simple. It's pulling the trigger without moving the sights, and that's it. And there's a lot of technique and practice that goes into doing that really well and effectively in practice. But at the end of the day, yeah, the only thing that is required to hit a target at this distance, even with a tiny compact gun like this is pulling the trigger without moving the sights and that's it you know so what i want you to do is you're gonna um do a couple of dry fire practices where you point the gun at the target and you're just gonna pull back on the trigger smoothly just pull, keep pulling it back uh -huh. as smooth as you can and you're gonna watch what happens to your sights and you're just gonna watch and watch and watch and your goal is to just not move them at all is to move them as little as possible because that's the only way you're going to actually end up hitting the target. Yeah, I, I can see movement. Even though I feel like I'm right on it. And then do you see that movement when you pulled the, the uh, trigger? Now, yeah, don't, like... get, don't, don't confuse post trigger compression movement with pre yeah. movement, right? So let me show you what, that, what I mean by that. So. When you're out here, if you break the trigger and then move the gun, that's not going to necessarily influence yeah. the shot. If you're do what you do after the trigger breaks, so much as what you're doing right as the trigger is breaking. Yeah. And so, um, what I'm going to do is uh, let me let me do this. So is it loaded? No, yeah, it's loaded. Do I already got a round in there. Okay, stop. Put the gun down. 
So this is an exercise that I do with people. Oh. Uh, you may not realize it. So your goal, I told you, was do not move the sights. Whatever mm -hmm. you do, don't move the sights. <laughs> before, That's and I could, see, I could see before the trigger's even breaking. So this is where you're aiming. Yeah. And where it breaks is about right uh, here. So that's how you're like, you're shooting. You're literally going for, I mean, the difference between this and this is the difference between five feet at that distance, yeah. you know? So now, now that you know that, now what you need to do, you're gonna sit here and do five times in a row, just practicing. I'm gonna break. and be aiming at the target on the right. Okay. And I want you to just do that same exact ex exercise. You're just pulling the trigger back, keeping the sights on the target. There you go. Boom. Back smoothly without moving the sight. Okay, that was a good hit. Yep, that was a good hit. There you go. Nice. Dang. Okay. <laughs> At least I got some. Yeah, there you Thank go. Thank you so there much. You go. <laughs> um, It's fun to shoot in the sense that it's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get these two targets here. Oh, hold that one real bad. Oh, Millimeter. So why do you carry that one? You want, you want to really know? Yeah. <laughs> the actual answer? I don't know if this can be on camera. It's literally, it's completely covered by dudes, right? What did he say? Hey! Oh. And so, a semi-auto gun, you know how to put a semi-auto gun out of battery, meaning like it's not going to work, uh -huh. is you just press up against the slide. In fact, I'll, let me, uh, let me just show you real quick. So with this gun, if I were to say draw this pistol, mm -hmm. if somebody's on me, if somebody does that, this is now a malfunction. It's yeah. now useless. Yeah. The gun's literally not going to work until I can, with two hands, or somehow figure out a racket, but like, literally, this that amount of pressure right there, like this, is enough to where this gun doesn't even work anymore. So if I saw somebody pull a gun out, I can literally just grab the gun okay. and it's not gonna work. It's yeah. not gonna shoot. They'll point at me. Exactly. It, ha it has a it has this pretty major failure point, right? And so for me, my personal experience is the one time I probably would have used a gun, at least uh, you know up to that point, uh, uh, I would not have wanted a semi-auto gun. I would have wanted something that. Uh, even if somebody's grabbing or pushing against, yeah. it's going to fire. And so that's why, here, stand back here. That's why um, a hammerless gun, so there's no hammer. Yeah. So literally, once this is loaded, as you, I mean, you would have to, uh, there's not much you could do to jam this gun up in comparison to a semi-auto gun. So this gun can actually be used from your pocket. Like literally, if my hand is in my pocket, I can I can be shooting you from this oh. position, whereas if it was a semi-auto, one it either wouldn't shoot or would shoot once and now it's malfunctioned. Yeah. No matter what, if I try to shoot this gun in my pocket, it's gonna malfunction after the first shot. Whereas this one, I can get five. I can squeeze. I can be standing at a gas pump like this, my hand on my gun, and I can squeeze off five rounds like this. Bam, 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 bam. It's gonna fire. Um, more likely than this. Why? Well, I want you to shoot it. Okay. For fun. It's fun to shoot in the sense that it's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get these two targets here. I don't think I ever shot a revolver. Well, yeah, okay. it's a 12 pound trigger, okay? So this is gonna be about twice as heavy as, as your gun and it's a very long pull. So as you pull it, just keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Dang, <laughs> wow, okay. Woohoo! Nice. That's a good hit. Nice. There you go. So I think today was more of a day of Dylan teaching me how to shoot. In your opinion, how how do I do? Like you did really honest. good. You're super coachable. You're about as coachable as uh, women tend to be. Guys tend to have an ego in the way, and they're like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I've shot guns before, and they just kind of want to keep doing it their way. They'll listen, but then they don't do it. You were listening, and you're doing the things that we were talking about, and you were understanding why what was happening was happening, and you were able to 
address it, correct it, and then go from not being able to hit steel yeah. at all at the beginning. Embarrassing, have, I know. And to be fair, we have st I put steel far out. So we're probably 60, 70 feet out there with small steel plates. And so that's really challenging, challenging to do with a really small yeah. micro handgun like the P365, right? And so uh, for you to come out and see like these big deviations in where you're shooting, but then within about 10 minutes, to be completely change that from not being able to hit the target to be able to have like 70% accuracy rate, like yeah. at that distance with such a small handgun. And in that short amount of time, that's a massive improvement. So like, oh. that's awesome. That's oh. super cool. Appreciate and now it. when you come back to the range, you'll you'll be able to build on that. Yeah. Like, all right, now I know where I'm starting from. Those things aren't so much at the forefront of your mind. They're a little bit more like, I know what I'm doing now. And now you can start building on that, build up that confidence and like steadiness to just be able to uh, really focus on what it takes to shoot, which is pull the trigger without moving the sights. That's it. There you go. That's what he taught me. And I think it's more of a great coach versus me actually, <laughs> actually doing it. But anyways, this is a wrap and we're out of here. Let's go.